throughout the world, 10 million died of COVID, 35 million died of heart attack and stroke. So we really need to take our health far more seriously now that we're back to normal, we can get back to our normal activities, and let's start taking baby steps. We're joined now by celebrity trainer and best-selling author Jim Karras. Good to see you, Jim. It's good to see you, Doug. So many Americans are fed up with COVID-19 just because we've been inundated by the consequences of all this and the, the various mandates from the government. One thing in the midst of COVID, I think that a lot of Americans have neglected is their own personal health. Uh, Doug, so very true. I call these last two years nothing short of punishment. And now let's hope the punishment is over and we can get back to our new normal, our post-COVID new normal, and start taking better care of ourselves. Yeah. And, and what's the key to that? What's the key to taking better care of yourself? We're facing in this country, just for starters, a, a terrible obesity epidemic, which has life-changing consequences, adverse consequences, right. as, especially as you get older. Interesting, Doug. The Wall Street Journal about a week and a half ago did an article that during the period of time of COVID, 900,000 Americans died of COVID, whereas 100. 1.6 million people died of heart disease, heart attack, and stroke. Throughout the world, 10 million died of COVID, 35 million died of heart attack and stroke. So we really need to take our health far more seriously now that we're back to normal, we can get back to our normal activities, and let's start taking baby steps of one step at a time to really enhance our mind and body going forward. I mean, it's really easy to say that we're, we're having this obesity epidemic, but, but actually losing weight, for individuals to lose weight is, is a monumental task. It's just not easy. You're advocating this, this baby steps thing. Yes. What, what's a good starting point for somebody who's just looking in the mirror and say, oh. I'm, I'm not God, happy at, at all. Um, one thing you can start by doing is there was an apple study many, many years ago uh, from Washington State, ostensibly the largest apple growers in the country, that if you eat an apple before breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you will eat approximately 500 calories less a day, you'll lose about a pound a week just from eating the apple. If you're not getting adequate sleep, Doug, and there's enormous University of Chicago research on sleep deprivation and how it creates a hormonal imbalance that literally causes your body to gain weight. I've said for many years, it sounds a little trite, you snooze, you lose. So if you're struggling with not getting the adequate sleep per night, which is approximately between six and a half and eight hours a night. Try to get to bed 15 minutes earlier. Try to get up 15 minutes earlier. It's these little habit-based changes that produce big long-term results. It's like compounding interest. I'm glad you mentioned sleep because I was perusing your, your website and I see it's really one of the five, I don't think you use the term pillars, but it is one of the five it's, pillars. It's one of the five of pillars, health. yes, Doug. Yeah, uh, you, you mentioned uh, exercise, we all know that. Sleep, mm -hmm. nutrition, recovery, and hydration. What, what's recovery about? Recovery is a very big um, new frontier in the fitness industry. I've been in the industry for 35 years and approximately eight years ago I happened to have started the eighth cryotherapy, the cold therapy business in the country and the first in the Midwest. Recovery is all about the utilization of massage, utilization of cold therapy, really? infrared saunas, compression sleeves on your knees or on your hips or on your back, cupping, um, which interestingly enough, you know, the old cupping uh, yes. style of massage, I'm Greek and my yaya used to do them to me when I was a little boy and I was sick and it was called vendusas. So all of well, these- How does it work? What's uh, what the it does is it? when you do apply massage, Doug, you apply pressure to bring blood to the injured and or affected area, tight muscles. You know, I'm very tight in my trapezius above here from doing so much computer work and such. Mm -hmm. What cupping does is pulls the skin away and enables the healthy blood to go and give nutrients, oxygen in particular, oxygen rich blood, to the injured area. So instead of pressing, which is classic massage, you pull, which is the opposite, and it can be very effective for people who have had a long standing injury or tight muscle. So this is not some new agey thing. This is no, documented. No, it's, it's been actually studied very, very old, and it's come yeah. back into vogue, which makes me very happy because there's a lot of research to support that the more you can recover, accelerate recovery, bring healthy oxygenated blood with nutrients to an injury, that injury is going to repair faster. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the role of, of stress in, in bad health and, right. and how destructive it can be well, in it excess. Is, it's so dangerous because the good news, bad news about stress, Doug, is that actually used in small doses, stress is wonderful. In the olden days when you were guarding your cave to keep your family safe from wild animals or wild people coming to harm you, 
you actually had the stress hormone pump up because it kept you awake, it kept you alert, it kept you ready to take action if necessary. Mm -hmm. But once that stress was gone, you're supposed to go back to the brake pedal, which is called the parasympathetic response. There's really only two ways your body is, stress or flight, fight or flight, or the parasympathetic. Think of it as a gas pedal versus the brake. Mm -hmm. With chronic stress, when you're stressed out throughout the entire day, which has been so prevalent these last brutal two years, your body stays in the stress state and the hormone cortisol is released. And that is a hormone that actually makes you eat more and carry more belly fat. And it's very destructive to your brain functioning and your energy levels. You're not able to do as much as you'd like to do. You simply don't have the energy because your body is combating the stress. Another one of your five pillars. Hydration. We were, yes. we were both drinking water. Yes, we were. Just before we started here. Absolutely. It is, um, I am from Chicago. So in the winter months, we have such dry heat and it really robs your body of its essential fluids, your water in your body. The human body is over 60% water. The brain is over 80% water. So if you're dehydrated, similar to what I just discussed about stress, your body's using all of its energy to combat the fact that you're not properly hydrated. Many people who have had COVID, I have shared with them the minute they emailed or text or called me, I had a positive test. I'm like, please, please begin immediately drinking as much water. The water is going to give your body the tools to fight the disease. The dehydration may make it even worse. Hmm. So definitely hydrate. And by the way, any liquid counts. I'm a big fan of tea because tea has many antioxidant properties. It is also an anti-inflammatory. Uh, my wife, I don't want to get too, too graphic about this sort of thing, but she, she says, you need to drink more water because I see the results of the, the color of your urine sometimes. Absolutely. And, and, and if it's yellow, it's bad. If it's clear, you're, you're good. You're, you're good to go. Well, you're right? absolutely that, good to go. So it's a, a good great point, indicator and a simple where one of the um, commonly referred strategies is eat approximately, drink problem, excuse me, approximately half of your body weight in ounces in water. So if I weigh 170 pounds, mm -hmm. I should eat approximately 85 ounces of water per day. That also depends upon if you're exercising, if you're in a dry climate, if you're drinking foods that may have sodium in them. So there's a lot of factors that do affect your water balance. Some people tell me they just don't want to do it because they have to go to the bathroom. They have to go to the bathroom. So I hear that all the time. And I say, you know, that's not a great excuse <laughs> to not give your body what it essentially needs. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about nutrition. I have a, a, a problem occasionally when I go to the grocery store with my wife, and, and thank God for my wife again, because she's <laughs> always there by my side when I reach for the cookies. Wrong thing. Or my, I was telling you before we rolled today, uh, my favorite delicacy in life is Captain Crunch cereal, okay? I admitted it. I said it right here, right now. And I shared with it, you, mine was Honey Nut Cheerio, <laughs> so I know the feeling. Anyway, so she says, no, you're not taking that home tonight. And I find when I stay off that kind of stuff, the craving for sugar goes away. That's correct. It's absolutely correct because when you light up your brain, and with many people, and it may happen because of an alcohol, a drink, a type of drug, a type of sugar, your brain lights up. And so when you continue to consume the sugar, it actually wants more over time. If you wean yourself off of the sugar, you'll actually find the cravings dissipate. And here's some interesting research. Artificial sweeteners mimic sugar. So some people mm. who think I'm gonna eat the art, utilize the artificial sweetener rather than the real sugar, it's just as detrimental to your desire to eat more sweets. You, uh, you are a celebrity trainer, <laughs> and I know that one of your clients is, uh, and I'm happy to talk about this, Hugh Jackman, yeah. and I'm happy to talk about it because we have the exact same physique. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, do you, what do you do especially for Hugh Jackman? When I worked with Hugh for many years, getting him in shape for a lot of um, movies, people would say to me, Hugh has such an amazing, upper body and chest, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And I would say lunges and squats. And they say, Jim, you're not answering my question. What do you do for Hugh to give him such a great chest and upper body? And I would say lunges and squats. They say, why aren't you answering my question? I said, I am. <laughs> By utilizing the big muscles of your lower body, specifically the gluteus maximus, your quads in the front of the legs, your hamstrings in the back, you create, once again, and going back to this, Doug, the hormonal environment, the testosterone, the human growth hormone, that when you do perform chest exercises, it allows you to get that much more of a response. So that's what was really, he was an amazing client, and sometimes I only had 12 weeks to get him into shape, so mm -hmm. we had to hit it pretty hard, both from a nutrition and exercise standpoint, mm -hmm. but he's a very regimented man, and he really works hard 
Well, one of the reasons he works hard is because he is a celebrity and uh, there's a financial gain. You get this role in the movie, if you maintain that position. For Joe Sixpack, it's a different situation. I wish we, we had more time, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's, let's call it quits right now. Okay. Uh, we, don't, we can't any, air any more of this today, but uh, we'll, we'll air more of this in a subsequent episode. So stick around and we'll talk more. Will do.